So Ottawa is building an exciting new state-of-the-art system and uh, it's uh, 12 and a half kilometers in length, 13 stations, three underground stations and we have a tunnel that's two and a half kilometers long and that's really a critical part of the system because it gets you uh, through the downtown core. The entire system is fully segregated which means there's no interacting with any other crossings or, or traffic and, and that really brings forward the most critical part of this first stage which is reliability. So uh, you're going to be able to get uh, from Tunnies to Blair very reliably on the train. And the other key element is that the bus system gets very reliable because uh, the bus system doesn't have to go into mixed traffic in the downtown core and so forth. So they'll be feeding the stations at Tunnies, Blair, Herdman and so forth. And people can have a reliable, safe, uh, state-of-the-art system going from Tunnies to Blair. That's just phase one. Phase two is just around the corner. So our trains are manufactured by Alstom, uh, they're the Citadel Spirit vehicle, they've been customized for Ottawa. They hold 600 people, that's accomplished by coupling two cars, single cars together, so they're almost a football field in length, so 100 meters in length. 14 doors, uh, double doors, so there's lots of access points uh, for people to get in and out uh, to carry the very long, uh, large volumes that we have. Um, 13 uh, stations, 3 underground. Um, 34 vehicles total. In the morning rush hour, you'll see 15 double vehicles out in service, same in the afternoon, and then things taper down on weekends and in between and so forth. Double track everywhere, so uh, you're not uh, doing crossovers and so forth. We do have what are called crossovers in the event that we have to modify service and safety elements and things like that. Uh, three underground stations, um, the above ground stations, uh, a lot of them have uh, paid fare zones so that uh, once you're inside the stations you're within a paid fare zone and then Tunney's, Blair and Herdman have massive uh, bus layup areas so the transfer points people don't need to worry about the complexity of that your bus will always be at the same location clearly marked uh, fully segregated right away so that we're not interacting and having to be, have delays and so forth with crossings and things like that and uh, lots of abilities uh, to ensure that this service is run efficiently in the event that there's something on the track or there's an incident and so forth. Uh, one of the interesting parts about our system is our stations. Uh, typically LRT stations are at grade and uh, they have very small uh, stations. If when, uh, when you go and look at our uh, uh, stations, both the underground and above ground, they're, they're very large in scale. That was not done just for architectural purposes. Uh, that's because we handle very large volumes. We will be the busiest LRT system in North America on day one, so that surpasses the Green Line in Boston. And those stations needed to be large for day one volumes, but also for that growth for the 30 to 50 year period. Um, can't talk enough about the stations. Our, uh, the architecture is, is uh, beautiful. Everything from roof lines that guide you when you're inside, they navigate you intuitively so that uh, you don't have to depend on the wayfinding system. They're open, they're airy, there's no dark corners from a safety perspective. Uh, we had our uh, safety groups look at them. Fully accessible, lots of glass which lets in lots of natural uh, light. There's uh, warming areas for winter, for uh, uh, some limited space if, if for those cold days and so forth. Uh, but uh, they're really exciting. The underground stations are beautiful in scope and scale and the artwork that is dispersed through all of the stations are really again some of the best in class and uh, we truly wanted those stations to be integrated into our community reflective of our community and they are both through design through the elements that are used in there the artwork pulls it all together and makes them warm welcoming spaces so customer uh, convenience and comfort is very important so we have a wide range of things that again are innovative but we've also learned from best practices so our underground stations are integrated with those buildings we've had great relationships with the developers so lion station if you work there uh, you uh, can get out of the train take an elevator stairs or escalators up to your workplace or to the food courts and so forth uh, rito center is the same thing uh, saint laurent the same so we've integrated our stations in with that. We've also got some rough-ins in the future for connections to some key places 
like uh, the Via Rail station and so forth. And we made sure that you know, we're protecting passengers when they make that connection there. The other key feature on the customer piece is uh, we wanted to have the best ticket vending machines out there and fair gates. We have some of the best in the world and customer service is the focus. So if you have any question about anything, you can walk up to one of those uh, fair vending machines. They're, you'll see them in every station and outside and inside. You press the button and you'll have a live operator instantly come up to you and ask you, how can I help you? Whether you, need, you don't know how to buy your ticket, you're lost, you've lost uh, your wallet, you need some guidance, uh, you want to know how the system works, we're there to help you and they're always active uh, as long as the train is in service. So our vehicles are built by Alstom and uh, one of the innovative things that uh, they did to meet the Canadian content rules uh, was they wanted to assemble vehicles in our storage facility, maintenance and storage facility, which is located on Belfast, just down uh, the street from the AOC Transport Headquarter. What's interesting about that is, again, another first in the world, is that parts were shipped from around the world and the vehicles were assembled locally. Why is that good? Well, not, not to only do you meet the Canadian content rules, but you're also developing a, a local skilled workforce. Um, the cars are built locally, they're maintained locally, and the infusions of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars into the local economy, not just for the short term, the five-year build, but there's also a 30-year maintenance contract, which Alstom has, uh, that they're going to be maintaining the vehicles here. So it's, it's good for the customer from a transit perspective. It's great for the economy. It's also great environmentally in that you're getting uh, things built locally, so emission controls and so forth. So it's a win-win-win for everybody. Alstom wanted to provide Ottawa a vehicle that uh, can work in the Ottawa climate, and it will, and everything from the design features, double glazing uh, on the glass, the radiant heat that I spoke about earlier on. But in terms of some of the innovations, this is one of the fastest LRT vehicles in, in the world. It can hit speeds of 105 kilometers an hour. We did that in our test track. Um, and so the comfort, the reliability, the design, if you're into uh, train designs, the bogies, uh, where the wheels are and so forth, they're, uh, they're uh, secretly designed by Alstom. They, they believe they're leading the market in terms of LRT vehicles because it can reach those maximum speeds. Our train uh, is an electric system. It's, uh, it's very innovative in that regard also. There's what's called regenerative system, so it powers uh, uh, power back into the grid through the braking of trains and it can pump it to the next train if it's close enough. Uh, the uh, service uh, curve, the draw that we do on the electrical system is optimized through our control system, speeds, hills, curves, and so forth. And uh, we know when customers get on the line, they'll see those big gray boxes off on the side. Those are the substations, so they they manage the load to the system, the electrical load. They're optimized and spaced accordingly throughout. They can also be isolated in the event that one goes down and so forth. The power within these trains, there, are, there is some uh, limited battery pa uh, backup systems in the event that uh, we lose uh, power. The connection from the electrical system to the train is through what's called an overhead catenary system. So those are those fine wires that you see uh, running over top of the tracks. There's a, there's a system that takes it from the, the catenary to the trains and it powers up the train just like what you see in here. So there's great LED lighting, there's radiant floor heating that's uh, keeping you warm in the winter, fully air conditioned, again, uh, you know, uh, another uh, leading edge in terms of all the features for customer comfort. Um, the, uh, the trains themselves are uh, powered through that electrical system and there's a lot of redundancies and backup plans and subsystems that uh, ensure that we have power all the time. So uh, residents have heard me talk about uh, how, uh, what makes our system state of the art. It's really the trains and the train control systems. So we're the envy of many other uh, systems across North America. If you look at New York City, which runs a great uh, subway system, they're just now looking at going to what's called communication-based train control system. That's a fancy term for uh, a system that controls the speed, the functionality of the trains, and what it does from a uh, customer perspective is enable you to increase the frequency of service without necessarily adding trains. So it reduces the spacing in between the trains, it provides a, 
the highest standard of safety so that there's never collisions. Uh, it, it ensures that your trains are running according to the schedule so there's frequency that people can expect. Uh, the trains are also state of the art. They have the communication train uh, based control system integrated in that and those systems and the subsystems feed the next stop announcements so people always know where they are. They, they push out the data to the various apps so people know when their train is coming. The next stop uh, announcements in the system, in the train and at the stations. So all those uh, very complex systems uh, provide the great customer experience, reliability and safety. Safety trumps everything. So we're running state-of-the-art trains with state-of-the-art uh, control systems. So gone are those big clunky systems that you see out there with signals with long spacing between trains and so forth. The other key thing is it enables us to improve service frequency if our population or our demand grows without adding train service. We can reduce the spacing in between the trains. So we're built for the short term, the medium and the long term. The uh, communication based train control system, it controls how close trains can come to one another. So if you look at old systems, uh, they relied on line of sight, how far the operator could see, and also the, tra the actual signals out in the system. Um, this is a moving block system. It's a fancy term for saying that the, uh, the algorithms within the system know exactly, precisely where every train is, and they optimize the spacing in between those two trains so that they have safe uh, stopping distance, in the case of an emergency or something like that, but it also enables you to increase what's called the headway, and that's the time between trains. So currently when we launch our system, we're going to be under uh, less than five minutes. So forget about a timetable. You don't need to worry about it during peak periods. If you miss a train, you've got to wait just under five minutes. The next one will arrive in the morning and afternoon rush hour. We can reduce that spacing down to 90 seconds. So for those of you that are familiar with Toronto, New York City, or Montreal, yeah, during the peaks, we could get to 90 second frequency. There's a train coming every minute and a half. That's safely, reliably, and consistently because we have state-of-the-art technology. You, you can go to Singapore, look at those places. London Underground is converting to communication-based train control. The newer systems that are being built in North America are going to that. We've got it here. We're very visionary. And, uh, you know, when people talk about why it's taking so long for testing and commissioning, you set it, you get it right, you do the various tests, and again, safety trumps everything and you get that great customer reliability uh, factor. We were able to go fully autonomous. We chose to put an operator in the cab uh, and that's important. That adds another layer of safety, customer service and so forth. But the trains are operating in fully automated mode with an operator inside our vehicle at all times. So customers are assured that they have the safety and security of the system plus our professionally trained staff that, as you can see behind me, use the simulator to be trained on. So safety is very, very important for us on our rail system. It is the cornerstone of everything that we've done. We've got what's called a safety management system. Uh, we're uh, we're self-regulated, but we also have an independent reviewer that uh, looks at our safety management system on a regular basis and then does an annual report in that regard. I can't uh, talk about our system without talking about our operators and our staff, controllers, everybody that's been involved in this. We've invested millions of dollars in our training programs in technologies such as the simulator and that's uh, about uh, one thing. That's about ensuring that we're safe all the time. Our control room is state-of-the-art uh, and uh, the first multimodal uh, control system of its type in North America. So every single mode, diesel, electric, bus and para all under one roof, including our special constables. Our special constables will be riding the rails, they'll be at stations so that they're safe, uh, uh, the, the safety is there. There's panic buttons and so forth within our trains also and it's all integrated. Every single uh, train, all our platforms have hundreds and hundreds of cameras, so we're always there to support you and uh, you can look for the, uh, the, uh, the alert buttons and so forth on the trains, on the platforms there's instant feed into our control room. You know, we wanted to ensure that we had capacity for 30, 40, 50 years out. So the trains are modular, they can expand. We can reduce that frequency, of the spacing in between the trains as we talked about earlier. And in addition to that, the underground stations, when you go see those platforms, 
We didn't want to come back in 20, 30 years time and have to re-excavate and shut down the system. So we built the platforms for the ultimate length of trains, which gets us to that ultimate capacity uh, if we do uh, stretch out the trains and when we do that. And so every station is sized to accommodate growth. So, uh, you know, in summary, in terms of planning for the future, trains are expandable. The system can increase your frequency. You can go to the longer platforms because they're already built and it doesn't have to be disruptive. And again, you know, in Ottawa, we don't brag that much about what we've been doing, but the world is watching us. Not only are we converting the first bus rapid transit to light rail system, it's been talked about around the world, we're the first to do it, but we're also planning for growth and expansion so that you don't have to come back and shut the system down. You know, our mayor wanted to again connect with the community. He's, uh, he's very well um, in tune with the community and, and cares deeply about making a connection. We're not just building a railroad system, we're building an extension of this community. So the naming of the vehicles, he held uh, competition and the names that, uh, that people across the city brought forward, uh, just phenomenal. You, you can see that already out there. The design of these vehicles, uh, very innovative. We, uh, we said to our community we wanted them to be part of it, so the Accessibility Advisory Community were here. They signed off on the design of the elements. Uh, interesting features like the floor, the different colors on the floor, uh, designate certain areas and so forth. The fact that we have extra grab handles everywhere, all yellow, uh, are very, very important for accessibility. And uh, the vehicles, the design of the, uh, the outside, uh, reflect OC Transpo, but also Canada. We are the nation's capital, so you see the big maple leaf that's uh, part of the design. Uh, we, uh, we think that's a, a design that will last the test of time, and when Canadians come and visit Ottawa or foreigners come and visit our great city, they'll know immediately, just like on our buses, they'll see that red and white flag and they'll be proud.